Welcome to the Alive Lauren podcast and the place of celebrating juicy, soulful whole, living and adventuring on this journey of a lifetime. Our joy, our choice, question mark. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just had quite a few things, little interactions and things come up around this theme. And the one... So my son had um, his birthday this past week and when I'd wished him happy birthday in the morning and then he went to school and I asked him, how, how was the rest of your day? And then there had been something, some event the day before, so there were a lot of kids not at school. And he said um, that, yeah, a lot weren't there and nobody actually remembered without him reminding them. And then he also added in that he felt a bit sad, but... He thought it really was because he'd built up expectations. <laughs> sure. So, yeah, it was just really profound in terms of chapter, I think it's 17 of Living Untethered, where there's a line there around the difference between, like, suffering is caused by the difference between what we want to happen and what is actually unfolding. And, like, it's almost like the bigger that gap... <laughs> the more the suffering. <laughs> um, and in line with this, it's like, yeah, I just thought there was a lot of like wisdom and maturity in what my son had remarked about his expectations. Because if he'd gone to school with no expectation of anybody and being equally happy and excited to remind people as opposed to people remembering on their own, so because there was a desire to go maybe... You know, to be made a fuss of, to have people remember, maybe someone bring balloons or something. So th that was the want versus what actually unfolded. And the more opposite they are, the more attached we are to the want, <laughs> the more the suffering, which is then our joy, our choice, because who's the one choosing the wants and getting so attached to them that anything outside of that is not a pleasurable experience. Hmm. It also ties into the, because it reminded me, him, me, I shared with him with the four agreements about um, not assuming and, and just don't take anything personally. Phew. And as, as long as, also along the same vein, so somebody else I know, so she'd um, gone to like a, kind of like a dance class and it was the teacher's birthday either on that day or recently and she wanted to make a fuss and she organized balloons and she made some food and then the teacher's response was quite like oh my god like who brought these balloons and they like in the way and no eating in the studio um, so again here is not taking anything personally because the person who shared the story was talking about how now she thinks she doesn't like this person anymore or sometimes she likes her sometimes she doesn't but then it's all based on like an expectation or want of how you want that person to behave and reciprocate in terms of what's been done that they would be like oh wow and thank you and oh my god I feel so special and you're so wonderful so then if that's a reaction wanted and it's not <laughs> what happens um Sure. So, yeah, it was just like, and then contemplating also with myself just constantly things that I may wish to unfold a certain way and just really digging a bit deeper because it's not, it's not the thing with whether it be my son, whether it was this other story with the birthday surprise, whether it's me in terms of some plan that I have, someone I'm looking forward to see and something gets canceled or something unexpected happens and it doesn't, it's not so much that event it's because at that event or when that circumstance happened I would feel connected present alive like appreciated that's what I'm after not so much the vehicle the want it's just more that I think I'm so obsessed or convinced that that would give it to me yo and then the other thing also was coming back was just some over times of listening to Mickey Mickey Singer of one occasion where like he, he paints a picture of imagine you've been in a relationship with someone for years and you've been very happy and you really enjoyed the relationship and then one day this person announces that I'm just so unhappy I've been miserable for years now I actually can't stand you I can't stand this relationship it's just been festering inside I just haven't found the strength to tell you 
And imagine if the reaction is like the most sincere, I'm so sorry to hear that's been your experience. I, I've actually loved every moment of this journey with you. Because if before that, you'd actually been enjoying the relationship and enjoying being there, why should that change in light of somebody else's experience? It would be like, I'm, I'm so sorry that's been your experience. As opposed to taking it personally. Like literally, imagine like we wiring ourselves, even when it's directed to us, not to take it personally and just really have compassion and sympathy, empathy, with the whole package of like, that that's the other person's experience. Wow. Yeah. And then the other one as well, and similar as well with like breakups and things of like talking about being grateful for the time that somebody is present and knowing that if something changes, somebody leaves or somebody wants to exit, helping them pack. But you can help them pack still with it with a broken heart and make allowance for all the full spectrum of what it is to be alive and feel deeply as a human being, to be moved deeply, widely. doesn't necessarily mean to get lost in devastating or more challenging emotions and things. They're not quicksand. They're not, <laughs> they're not like, we're not meant to be locked in prison with them. But it's actually just to dance and move with them and be moved by them and let them move through. Sure. So, yeah, a lot of those things were really, really vivid um, in my space the last few days and just also seeing those longings, wants and desires and having infinite compassion for the part of us that oh, gets so drawn into the illusion. You know, like if we went to see like a David Copperfield or one of these world's greatest magicians, you get pulled in to the magic of the show. And yeah, this world we live in, the illusions, it's, it's very strong. It's very easy to get pulled into thinking that there's stuff on the outside. Like, what do I need to be okay? The thinking is, is, is very strong as opposed to why am I not okay in the beginning? It's just so crazy. It's like also because Mickey often does the analogy of a river and talking about like you've got this river running smoothly and now you put a big boulder in the river. So now it's like really affecting the flow and that of the water. Now you can either like think of a contraption, invent a contraption to like compensate for this bold in the river and spend all the time and energy and resource doing that. Whereas the easiest solution is actually just to remove the boulder. Because without the boulder in the stream, the stream is going to flow perfectly unhindered. So it's like the real long term solution is not. What do I need? It's not, how do I compensate for the boulder in the water? It's actually, why am I not okay? Because there's a boulder in the water. And let's actually get that out. Yo. Yo. So here is to getting rid of removing boulders. Through actually just breathing, relaxing and releasing and allowing. As life magically brings us, allows us enables us to help those uncomfortable or really like situations we've clung to or the ones we've resisted helps them check out helps bring them to the checkout desk <laughs> and all we got to do is just actually be brave enough to relax and release hmm to feel deeply be moved deeply and allow them to move as opposed to you're wanting them to stay forever or being scared to let them in Happy adventuring, precious heart, and here is to our joy, our choice. Mm. Mm -hmm.